That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get ready to pass my live stream on Sunday. Everybody, how's it going? Welcome to Pasquatch Bros. I hope you're doing all well. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day so far. It's a little hot here, high of 35 Celsius today. I'm not the happiest of assholes at the moment in terms of the temperatures, but at least it's a little bit cooler in here right now. Just a moment here, then we'll pull up the show, and then we're going to be able to say hi to everyone. I hope you're all having a wonderful week so far, my friends. Let's see here. Let's turn on the chat here. Why can't I see the chat? One second here, everybody. It seems to be being weird. One second here. I'm trying to pull up the chat here. And then we can say hi to everybody. Oh, right. That is so strange. It's not giving me a, a live chat option on this. How am I going to do this now? Well, I have an idea, potentially. I know why. Is it because I'm... No, I'm logged in. All right. Well, this is really weird. Aha! I did it! I figured it out. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Let's go back to the beginning here, and we're going to start saying hi to everybody. What's up, Justin Rave? How you doing, my friend? What's happening? What's up, Mike the Saber Ride Squash? What's up, Holba Vasquez? What's Jeremy Sparks? Or what's up, Jeremy Sparks? What's up, Buds on a Budget? How's it going down in Oklahoma? What's up, Canopy King? What's up, Suburban Life? What's up, High Tower Gardens? What's up, Mikey Cruz? What's up, MGS Mass Pro Squad? What's up, Jay Stanfield? Mickey Cruz, what's cracking with shoes? What's up, Courtney? Country and Heart Finley. Yo, Pops, FPB, what's happening? Reef Wilson, skipping tax. Hey, yo. Uh, Kyle Homewood, what's happening, baby? What's up, Kyle Homewood? Happy Sunday to you as well. Uh, Dominator Buds, how's it going? Kyle Ferguson, what's happening? I'm doing well. I hope you're doing well. What's up, Chris Barton? The infamous Johnny K. You did, bro. Uh, welcome to the show, my friend. Uh, Warren Bay Levitt, how's it going? What's up, the Irish Wanderer? What's up, Jeremy Sparks? Colleen, how's it hanging, as it were? Uh, how's it going, Jose Canelo? What's up, uh, Snowflake the Boss? What's up, Justin Ray? What's up, Stuart Parkins? Edwin the Bird Bee, All Seasons Angler. Hello, hi to you. Mush Mush, what's up, baby? What's up, Peter Vigna? What's up, Eugene Dolan? Lobster Boy, Chris Matos, welcome. Munchable Bros, hey, yo. Warren Bay Levitt, uh, I wanted to ask you if you go through the steps of flushing your plants in week seven and, and then eight. Yes, I do. I flush for the last two weeks always. Uh, Country at Heart Finley, Jason Anderson, how's it going? Much love back to you. Yerba Buena Garden, what's happening? Jay Sewell, what's up with you? Thank you very much. Ooh, I'm going to take that off because I'm overheating. Reef Wilson, what's happening? That's right. All right. Josh Squatch, baby. It's been a while. Good to see you. Mike, uh, Mickey Cruz, how's it going? Tom Torres from Holland, Michigan. Nice. How's it going down in Holland, Michigan, my friend? Mr. Big Red Dog 420. Girls are looking beautiful, bro. Well, thank you very much. I'm quite happy with them myself, actually. They are almost done and are going to be beautiful by the time they're done. Jeffrey Deer, what's happening? James Leach, what's up? <laughs> Colleen, it's, it's hanging just fine. <laughs> I love it. I love it, girl. Oh, good time. Oh, uh, Jeremy Sparks, what's up? Uh, Matthew Stewart, okay. I should incorporate BC into my name. Nah, that's okay. I'm more than just a British Columbia guy. Um, I'm actually not even from BC. I've only lived out here. Now, mind you, I taught myself to grow in British Columbia, and I do consider myself a BC grower. Uh, everything I do is BC. Uh, but, uh, you know, now, nah, Pasquats Growers, we're a global entity now. We're all over the world. Five out of the six continents. We've got community members everywhere. And, uh, you know, I don't want to make it totally, like, exclusionary by incorporating that. Uh, people know I'm Canadian. I mean, you should, I mean, I think after a while watching me, you figure it out pretty quick. I'm definitely not American, you know, so. Uh, right? Hello. I love it. It doesn't tell me how many people are watching me. 
my phone was being screwed the other day, so we did do a factory reset on it, and so it's not doing everything the, the, the way it used to. I'm finding it confusing, but that's all right. These things happen. All right, let's see if we can get a better angle here. That looks like more fun for everybody. There we go. You don't have to see my disgusting dad butt. All right, where was I? Uh, Warren Bateman says, can I explain how I've been uh, flushing this round? I certainly can. Uh, so Warren, uh, basically how we approached it, this one, okay? Uh, so we did our last big feed on the day they went into seven weeks, okay? So then I just used two to four liters for the first two days of carbonated water, okay? So I didn't do a hardcore actual flush for the first couple of days. I was utilizing that last heavy feed, maximizing it, and allowing the club soda trick or carbonated water trick to have a good time and those root systems for the plants, all right? Then I hit it hard. So after two days of that, I basically hit it with six uh, gallons of water each pot. That takes patience, even in a 20. That's a lot of runoff. Uh, then basically I did carbonated water the next day, then did six gallon the next day. So there's been three days in the first week where I hit it with six gallons, basically. And the rest of the days I was utilizing carbonated water. Um, yesterday I would have given them maybe about four gallons each. So I didn't go quite full six. Today, later this evening, I'm going to give them a nice big carbonated water treatment. Then I'm going to hit them really hard tomorrow, give them another six gallons. Um, we're going to basically do that on the day of last light. I will go in and I'll do another six gallon super duper flush. And then we're going to throw them into darkness there for 48 hour period before harvest. I hope that helps. Now, how much has been said while I was trying to get that out? All right, one second here, everybody. All right, so that's where I was. I found where I was. Happy Sunday to you as well, Kyle Homewood. Matthew Stewart. Uncle Pike, you should... Oh, we covered that. Country at heart, family, Ontario, baby. What's up, Ontario? I was born in Burlington. Jazz Squatch. Do I use Bovita Packs? Hell no. Never, ever use Bovita Packs in your weed, okay? If you've got some really dry weed, you can use them. Bovita Packs make your weed taste like shit. Um, I have used them once. I, I, I experimented with them once, and I was disgusted by what they did. Um, really, what you're going to want to do is you're going to nail that proper drying, and you're going to get your weed at that perfect moisture level within the own plant material for, for it to self-regulate throughout the cure. Okay, Bovita Packs are just going to fuck up your weed in my humble two cents. I hate the things. Um, the only time I would ever maybe kind of consider it would be putting it in an over-dried pot. But let's be honest, I probably wouldn't do that. I'd just take the dry pot and make it the hash oil and enjoy that. Because that'll still at least make something nice that way. Oh, thank you. I'm assuming you guys are telling me, yeah, because this phone's not telling me how many people are watching. Which is part of the fun for me. It's always fun to see how many people are, are in the show. You see Big Tree Farms. Hey, what's up, Big Tree Farms? How's California doing? James Peacock, 46, it says here. Uh, thank you, Jane. Jason Anderson, congrats on the engagement. Ah, oh, well, thank you very much, Jason. I appreciate it. How beautiful life. Happy Sunday, fun day to you. Uh, Matthew Stewart, understood, boss youth. Uh, Mr. Big Red Dog, 48, perfect, thank you. Jose Canella, when can I flip to 12-12? Okay, so basically, in terms of a rule of thumb, obviously, we're going to, one, vegging out your plants to a certain point is always a good thing. You know, you want the plant to be ready to kind of give you a, a, a decent amount of flower. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is think about how much light you have, how much room do you have. Don't forget the stretch. The classical stretch on most cannabis is going to, it's going to, at bare minimum, typically double in size. I've seen plants stretch up all the way up to 400% sometimes. It's kind of stupid. Uh, so, obviously make sure that your plants aren't going to overgrow your space. Um, in terms of a bare minimum height, I like to see at least 12 to 14 inches on the size of my plants before I flip. Uh, so I hope that helps. Um, how big are your plants now? Uh, Jeremy Sparks, you can, but I, I mean, I, I would say it's a waste of money and time. I, I, I really only really recommend club soda or carbonated water trick to be used during flower. Uh, typically, I'll incorporate that at uh, like week week three, maybe, is when I kind of start doing it, right? So, yeah. Ah, Zacharias, congratulations, though. Welcome to growing. It's a lot of fun. Uh, once you get that first one done, you know, I mean, 
if, if the grow bug bites you, I mean, you fall in love and you'll just keep growing it forever. It's a good time. What's up, Sci-Fi Gibson? It's been a long time, baby. How you been? Country at Hart Finley. You're even wearing my beer brand. <laughs> I used to drink Paps and then it started tasting rock, so now I'm just on the Bud Light. What's up, Dr. Weed Man? How you doing, my friend? Good to see you. Welcome to the show. Uh, KSG, the last shot. Hey, Pot Squatch, how's it going? I have a question. Uh, uh, okay, uh, first week of flower. Is the first week of flower with a calendar? Nope. The second you switch to 1212. Flower clock begins at the flip to 1212 when it comes to indoor cannabis cultivation. Anyone who tells you different is just wrong. That's how we count. Okay, so we always count from flip. Hey, no worries, Warren. Warren. Warren Bay Levin. Happy to help, my friend. What's up, Mike? The Saber Riot Squatch. Welcome to the show. Uh, let's see here. I use it throughout the flowering window there. Uh, country at High Finley. Typically, though, I don't incorporate it into until about weeks two or three. All right, Chris Mathos. Hey, man. I was wondering what you thought of that smango. Uh, Chris, it was good. Um, an interesting mix. Definitely overall an, an, uh, an indica dawn for sure to it. Nice structure. Like the shape of the buds that it produced. Decent density. Uh, some nice sweet smoke. Um, it was good. It was a good indica that's not cushy, right? Like, I mean, it was a nice representation of some of an indica dom world. And it was interesting. I got a few different uh, uh, phenotypes. Two out of the three, I'd say, were probably my more favorite of them. But, yeah, no, definitely has some good phenotypes. Got uh, Produced some decent weight. I liked it. It was good. I hope that helps. Thank you again. Ah, gotcha, country at heart, Finley. Uh, thank you, Jeremy Sparks. I appreciate it. Uh, yes, so mid-thumb, I'm definitely hitting a lot of extra CalMag on top of my three-part as an add-on. I use the ProCal supplement from Green Planet. Um, hell, sometimes I throw a little bit of, of Epsom salt in there, magnesium sulfate for fun. Sometimes for uh, an extra little bit of potassium, you know, maybe I'll make a, a banana peel tea and throw that in there too. What's happening, Gazers? Welcome to the show. What's up? 65 now, says Edwin the Birdbee. This is fun. Thank you for helping me look, everybody. Couples Cannabis Channel, welcome to the show. Good to see you, my friend. Or friends. Uh, family Outcast, what's happening, baby? Ah, oh, nice medical MJ. Not familiar with that strain, but fun name. Yeah, you know, Matthew Stewart, I mean, it's just like, and what I did when I was experimenting with them, I was using one of my strains that I developed that I knew intimately well uh, in terms of its curing and its drying and its finishing. Uh, so I used a cannabis I won, not only created it stabilized over two years, like I just, I, I knew it like the back of my hand. Um, and, and, and just the comparison to doing it, how I would normally finish it in what I call kind of the traditional or the pond squatch style, um, and then incorporating those packs. Ugh. Yuck! Just fucked everything up in my opinion. I just didn't like the finished product to be simply, to put it simply, really. Uh, Jeffrey Dare, um, well, you know, you can go in there. Well, you know, I mean, for example, like a product like Jake's is, works as a bit of a deterrent to, to pests coming up on your plants. Um, that's made out of a bunch of different things. And I don't, it might be available at a few stores down the States. It's not on shelves in Canada right now. This is a question for Gazers. Gazers, um, do you know if the toxic uh, uh, poisons, as it were, in the rhubarb green all natural pesticide spray that I'm still going to make that video on, that you, and you told me the recipe on that one, do you know if those toxins, when sprayed on fan leaves, will have a uh, preemptive protection? Like, will they deter pests from coming onto those leaves of that plant? Have you ever tested that, Gazers? That's a question for you on that one. Oh, no worries at all, country at Hart Finley. Totally fine. Does not bother me one little bit. Uh, Turp Monster. I'm doing well, Turp Monster. How you doing, my friend? I, I made it up, Vilma Dick Finn. I made it up. 
that's a that's a pot squatch brain thing. Um, I was probably in my earlier 20s as a grower, so I've been growing at that point for about seven or eight years. Um, and I had a grow friend who was the grandson of uh, uh, Dr. Atomic. I don't know if any of you know who he is. Uh, Dr. Atomic was a prolific breeder back in the day. Um, you know, pretty much did everything where he crossed it with Northern Lights. He had this obsession with crossing things with Northern Lights. Uh, but anyway, the grandson of Dr. Atomic was sort of, you know, teach me a few things. And I came up with the premise, I was like, well, like, I mean, if you're saying I could put, you know, sort of sort of potash as a top dress in terms of that to up my yields in certain ways. So I asked him, I was like, well, do you think if I were to use a carbonated water and the release of CO2 that way from the actual water in and of itself into the root medium might do anything? And he says, I've never tried it, but I mean, fuck it, you know, I mean, it, it could. Why not try it? So then I started trying it and fuck, I mean, the shit just worked. So ever since, I've been doing that literally ever since. Uh, and that was the origin story of that trick. So I came up with it. I had a girlfriend who was the grandson of Dr. Atomic, and we played an online game, so we both like would chat a lot. Uh, what it was called, uh, War of Legends, I think it was called. Yeah, it was great. Good old real-time strategy game. But uh, long story short, uh, that's where the origin story and that carbonated uh, soda water trick was. All right. Uh, Danny Hancock. What's up, Danny? How you doing, bud? Good to see you. As all of you who are maybe new to the channel just tuning in, PopsquatchGrowers.com is where you get all your swag needs. Eventually, that will be becoming the online garden supply store when we launch that. We're also going to put all of our stuff that we're going to be selling for garden supply as well uh, on Amazon as well. I said as well a lot just now. Ah, counting nights or days, it's not really any real different, let's be honest, my friend. It's a difference of maybe 12 hours. So we're, we're, we're implementing the same the same uh, uh, counting system. We're just looking at half of the day, and you're looking at the other half. With the yin and yang of how we look at flower. Oh, right. Uh, country at Heart Finney. Ashley Bofield would be watching, but she's sick in bed, bad stomach pains. Oh, fuck, man. Tell her I'm really sorry. I hope she feels better soon. Oh, Stuart Parkins, you must have air movement when you do 48 hours. Crank the air, drop the temps, run a dehumidifier, watch your humidity, watch all of them. Um, and since I'm going to be doing um, a heavy flush, but then running cooler temps and running the AC during this period, I'm going to crank my dehumidifier and make sure it's maintaining like a 50-55 uh, during that whole process just because the last thing we need is to have all of our hard work come and bite us in the ass because we don't dial in our secondary systems on that 48 hour period of darkness. So one, yes, definitely keeping air movement going, but also gonna be doing a few other things to keep that happy as well. Hey, hey, how's it going, Lanny? Lanny, Lonnie, Lonnie, Lanny, Lonnie, Lanny, something like that, Patterson. Welcome to the show, good to see you. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. I, I also feel they're looking quite nice. Oh, hell yeah. And also, Marco uh, Godessa, if you like the trick once you try it, obviously, you know, don't take my word for it. Try it yourself. And if you find you like the trick and you find it works, which is pretty much 100% of the people who've ever tried the trick, um, go invest in getting yourself a little soda stream. It's a little bit cheaper. It makes it easier. And then you don't look weird when you go to the grocery store and buy, like, 42-liter bottles of club soda. <laughs> Chris Barton, what are we thinking on the next run? We're going to be doing more Pink Kush, and we're also going to be doing Hindu Kush. So this is that new Superfino we're keeping now that was gifted to us by a friend. So we're going to run a bunch of that. We're going to run a bunch of the original Hindu Kush from back in the day as well. Hindu Kush is not a huge producer. I'll tell you that now. I'm going to still try to augment it as much as I can. However, what it does produce is some of the tastiest, most amazing marijuana ever. Uh, and that's why you... you you grow Hindu. You don't get a you don't get a huge yield on it, but what it does produce is absolutely astounding um, and beautiful and truly old school. Uh, so we're gonna be doing a bunch of that next. I am trying to see if I can get some of those premature violated death kush beans that we created that they may or may not pop. They were hard and big, but they weren't fully developed. We'll see if we can get them to go. I've got those started for fun. After the purple or purple. 
pink and Hindu Kush runs, uh, I think I'm going to do a big Gorilla Blue run because that shit produces beautiful buds. It's a beautiful hybrid and it trikes out dankly. And that one plant that we ran of it last time that we kept the cutting of, uh, I didn't really do anything to maximize it. I didn't really train it much. I didn't really do much of anything to it. So I'd like to play with that genetic as well. So we're going to be playing with that genetic uh, after we do the Hindu pink runs. Yes, but Cody Monko, that, that would be that would negate the entire premise of the experiment. I'm trying to show people how beneficial certain techniques can be used to still have a huge, amazing amount of production. Super tiny, thin stalks on these, okay? There was no real veg, for the most part, done to them. Um, and instantly into 20s, and they've exploded. That's the point of this experiment. I'm trying to show how effective these techniques that we've used this run are even when you've got other variables working against you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Snowflake to boss, no you're not. And stop, don't don't get down on yourselves, everybody. It is old, you can always learn, you can always move forward, okay? Never, never shit on yourself as a grower. Um, you're learning every day for the rest of your life as a grower. Never stop learning. There's always something to be learned. Doesn't matter how long you've been doing something, mistakes happen as well, okay? So don't beat yourself up. It's not gonna help anything. What's up, new grower 420? How you doing, my friend? Oh, behind that, I've got a bunch of fucking cucumbers going and carrots. They need a feed. They're hungry. They're cannibalizing some of their leaves there. But I, I'm growing uh, English cucumbers and carrots in the back in the residual side light for the fuck of them. Okay, sweet. Thank you, Gazzers. So, we will be releasing a video in the next week or two uh, showing Gazzers' special natural insecticide. And it does work as a deterrent to pests, so you can spray it on your fan leaves to keep them away. Uh, that's made out of rhubarb greens and a bitch, of, bitch, and a bit of dish soap. So we're going to be doing that for all of you in the next week or two on the channel, and we'll show you how to do that one. How you doing, new grower? Uh, Hi, Tower Gardens. Do you know if you can get uh, Jake's all in one of the states? I have been trying to get a lot of grow stores to pick it up. Nobody's actually ordered it. We've sent out probably about seventy samples to stores in the states. No one's called back to want to carry it, which is, you know, eh, they're lost. I don't, so to my knowledge, I don't think there's any real stores in the States. There could be. If your local grocery store wants some, send me an email. I'll hook you up, and uh, we can start shipping it down to the States for you, to your local grocery store. Matthew Stewart. Uh, is that total? And is that dry weight off four or five, my friend? second here uh, La Lonnie pa Patterson a big part of that is genetics too so what genetics are you rocking uh, I don't really grow sour diesels or anything sours they are too sad for me so I haven't really grown a lot of them in the past they're okay very sad most of them um, and at the end of the day everyone thinks like each strain is you know, there's a set certain thing. and I mean, I never really trust what anyone says when it comes to genetics almost ever. Like, we'll see what comes out and then if it seems right or not. But the biggest trick with any strain isn't having this understanding of what this should be. Like, I mean, one of the tips, for example, some strains get hungry really early in flower. That's an important tip to know. But, I mean, at the end of the day, it's about daily gardening. Learn to speak pot plant. The plant, regardless of strain or species, is going to tell you how it's doing, what it's wanting. There's certain telltale signs that you need to learn to look out for and watch. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so at the end of the day, you need to learn to speak the pot plant. Um, and, and then that will give you confidence to be able to go in blind to certain strains without even necessarily knowing the species of them or the, the strain background. Because really, at the end of the day, you know, most strains and people's genetics are hearsay. I mean, they may or may not be. You never really know where they got theirs from. Um, that's why I'm always trying to find old genetics, genetics that have been sitting around for a long time, that other growers have had for decades, some of them. I mean, that's how we can begin to bring these true original strains back. Many of them have been sort of bred out, shall we say, and like you'll have a company selling you one thing, but then like, if, for example, I know a lot of older strains, 
and then it'll get here and I'll grow it out and I'm like this is so not what hash plant is or this is so not the original GDP or this is definitely not a pink or this is definitely not a rock star you know what I mean like so yeah Yeah, I do the same thing, Turp Monster. I just don't use ice. I just rock ACs in the dark, and I super chill my plants. What's up, Grow Gorilla? How you doing, my friend? Oh, well, the cooking video wasn't a live stream. Those are videos, so don't feel bad about missing that. That was all a video. I made the video. Uh, so the cooking show that we're doing now on the channel, we've officially released episode one. It came in two parts. Uh, those are all videos. So I'm not going to be doing those as live streams. I'm going to be doing them as videos. So you didn't miss out on that. Uh, everyone who saw it watched it after the fact. So don't don't feel, feel bad about that, my friend. Uh, KSG, the last shot. So for outdoor plants, when is the first week of flower? Yeah. Outdoor plants are a little different. They start flowering a little bit slower. And I'm not an advocate for, well, I'm going to run it this many weeks. Like when people talk about outdoor plants, if this is eight weeks of flower for outdoors or nine weeks, I mean, oh, I don't look at it that way. We look at the maturation of the flower. We look at our trite colors. We watch the plant. Again, daily gardening. But that week window flowering period way of thinking is really only conducive, in my humble two cents, to indoor growing. Um, so, I mean, I would I, I don't think about outdoor in those terms. It's not the way I look. Uh, typically back in the day when we spoke about a lot of outdoor, we would talk about typical harvest windows. When are most things starting to become done? Usually we're harvesting anywhere from September to late October, where we are in the world anyway. Um, and it all depends. Sometimes you're lucky and you can even run it into November a bit and get some nice late pick, you know, left hook punch, as it were. Uh, again, I've never grown sour kush. It's uh, sour kush. I'm assuming would be something of the satty sour variety mixed with some form of a kush. Uh, so I don't personally know it. And again, a lot of people ask me a lot of times. You know, well, what? Well, tell me about this strain or tell me about that strain. And I'm like, don't even think about it like that, because you never really know if you're getting what you're supposed to be getting. I don't trust most breeders. Let's just be fucking honest. Um, and so it's about learning to speak the plant, right? learning basic information, learning basic signals or what I kind of call the physical plant psychology, its way of talking to you. Um, and when you, when you think about growing and learning about growing in that approach and way of thinking about it, you can grow anything and you can do it confidently as long as you're daily gardening and watching everything. Oh, no worries. Yeah, so if you got a little fan in there, Snowflake, throw a fan in there, you should be good. Oh, Cody Monko and that Gorilla Blue had a smell and a nose and a taste. It was astonishing. Yeah, that'd be the big butt in that one, Gazers, because the original Hindu back in the day produced fuck all. <laughs> what it did, like I said, was wow. It was amazing, right? But, oh, man. Oh, new grower. That's awesome. And dude, that is a really cool fucking uh, anniversary present. I dig. I love toys like that. Yeah, baby. You made it home. Welcome to the show. Got you down to your mama. Welcome to the show, baby girl. Uh, Jeremy Sparks. Dry powdered newts are definitely cost effective. Uh, they are totally a valid thing to be used if incorporated or utilized properly. Um, I've never been personally one to do that. Maybe, I mean, I, I've always been more of a liquid newt guy, just kind of my happy place. Um, you know, because other times where I'm doing things into soil, I mean, now mind you, most powder newts, I still liquefy if I use them and stuff. You just got to be a little careful doing that and kind of experiment a bit before you kind of just jump right in there. Uh, which is what I've typically done when I've played with them a bit in the past. Uh, I am a fan of liquid newts, though. 
But wire dry newts or powder newts, uh, a, a, a good thing. Well, one, they're very cost effective. They last a hell of a lot longer. So it's, it's definitely a good way to keep costs down uh, in terms of having still a fairly comprehensive feed system. But, you know, I like my liquid newts. That's gorgeous country at Hart Finley. Oh, I feel you. No, I feel you, country at Hart Finley. That sounds sexy, though. So the titties taste out nice. They, they, they worked well. Uh, you know, raw power, at the end of the day, uh, densities on flour are so different um, <coughs> that on a super dense bud, you could even on a decent one gallon jar have two ounces, two and a half ounces in it. Or if it's super airy bud, you could even have less than an ounce in the jar. Um, so bud densities in between strains and species are huge. The, the differences of their density Plus, you can even grow two clones in very different styles and environments and have completely different density at the same time. So, I wouldn't say there's a rule of thumb. I would say basically you could think of it in the window of like a one gallon jar, you could have, and I'm not, no, I'm, I'm wrong saying one gallon, I should say one liter. I mean one liter when I say that. I'm thinking about a 1,000 milliliter jar in my head when I'm talking, so I'm actually using the wrong measurement. Uh, so a one liter jar, so scratch the one gallon there. Um, you know, that could be a little under an ounce, or you could get up to two, two and a half ounces in that with some of the buds that I've seen. Like some of the, the buds in general produce super dense buds, especially if people are running like a hardcore elevated climate controlled uh, CO2 system. I've seen some, some buds come out proverbial weapons. Like, holy shit. It's pretty astonishing, actually, when you see some of them. <clears throat> That's really weird, Raw Power. I don't know. I don't know what my guess to why that would be. I don't know. Maybe... <clears throat> if it's only if it's grown with a specific growing style, there must be something to that growth style potentially or maybe there are certain terpenes or flavonoids in the cannabis or, or those strains you don't like. I don't know. Jeremy Sparks, how do I liquefy the dry powder newts? I put them in water and I beat the shit out of them. <laughs> They will eventually dissolve. <laughs> uh, Jesse Lennon, I think I missed the first part of your damn uh, question. In flour, uh, what? so ideal to back off to a times weaker. Uh, Jesse, what are you talking about? I don't. I, I don't. I think I'm missing part of this question, my friend. What's up, Vincent Turner? Thank you very much, my friend. Oop. You are my density, George McFly. <laughs> One, I love that movie, and two, epic. I love it, Stanton Dinger, that's funny. Yeah, and some plants will start to have those really cool secondary uh, primary uh, notes to their primaries come out really early on. Some things take months before they fully develop in terms of the cure, you know what I'm saying? Turbro grows. What's happening, Turbro grows? How you doing, my friend? Ah, well, Jesse Lennon, I don't feed by PPM. So... I'm not gonna have a number for you in terms of that. I'm old school with how I do it. I hand water um, in terms of this little grow here anyway. And, um, but I put a shitload of it in, especially when I'm kind of midway into flower. Like I hit it hard every feed. Uh, so the only thing that I put more than ProCal in obviously would be my blooms and and, and uh, sort of, you know, get my P and K's ops, you know. 
But uh, yeah, no, I hit that shit pretty hard, especially with a lot of BC genetics. They really quite enjoy a lot of calcium magnesium. I have grower friends that don't use almost any, and they hate it. And we always get into an argument about that. But it's just different styles. They have different ideas than I do. But so, for example, the two gallons on a heavy feed of Procal, like I'm putting a tablespoon and a half of, of Procal in there. So, I hope that helps. Electrical noises. Uh, have you any experience with autos? If so, uh, no, again, I don't feed by PPM. And autos are no different in regards to their basic dietary requirements in a traditional photo. It's still a pot plant. Uh, it's just having a auto flowering genetic from the third species, okay? Um, the one thing I will say, one, always start your autos in your finishing pots and start feeding autos earlier because some of them, I, uh, I don't grow a lot of them, but my friends do. Uh, some of them get really hungry really early would be my only thing, right? So just make sure you're watching for the initial signs of when they're hungry. That will be leaves getting light on you, seeing subtle discolorations, maybe changes to your tips. I mean, it could be a thousand and one subtle indicators to your fan leaf foliage that's going to tell you like, Daddy, I'm about to get really hungry, you know? And then you'll, you'll, you'll have the plant, you know, and you'll feed it. Have I ever tried insect grass? What's insect frass? Uh, uh, yeah, so eyes on. Calcium and magnesium are extremely important secondaries during flower for cannabis. 100%. Very important secondaries, my friend. Oh, so Jeremy Sparks, uh, the people that have wrenches or spanners, quote unquote, next to their names are people that I've made moderators to help me moderate and keep an eye on the public chat. Sometimes our shows get quite large. Sometimes we have as many as 100 or 100 plus people in these shows. Uh, so sometimes I miss things. Uh, if anyone has a really crucial you know, issue, either they will answer or they'll get my attention. Um, also, too, sometimes we get trolls. Sometimes we get assholes and uh, they help me keep an eye out for that too because I don't necessarily notice everything in these chats. I do my best to stay on top of it, but uh, yeah. I hope that helps. Insect shit. I've never used insect shit. Have I ever purchased? I mean, I use worm castings which I understand, but I mean, that's not their shit though, to my understanding. Worm castings are more uh, the super enriched chunks of their bodies, is it not? I could be wrong on that. I can't remember, but not necessarily, and they're not insects, but uh, insect shit. No, yeah, that's a new one for me. Uh, never tried insect shit. Curious though, what kind of insect shit do you normally use? <laughs> Oh, I'm sure it does, but I mean, like, what insect poop are we using? Oh, that's cool, Turf Monster. Very nifty. Oh, what's up, Coors? How you doing, Coors, baby? What's crack -a lagging It is their poop. Okay, I thought it was... Maybe they chopped them up, but, uh, yeah, you know, I always just mixed it in with make my super souls and didn't really look into it too much. I was just playing around and augmenting uh, Subcool's original Super Soil um, recipe that I first read probably in my mid to late teens and high times and then started playing around with it. Sadly, a lot of the stuff that I like to put into it now, it's just super expensive to do because uh, a lot of it comes from different parts of the world and it sucks. But one day I'll save my pennies and I'll do that for everybody. Oh, I'm a big, I'm 100% a big fan of darkness before I chop my plants. I typically will do eh, 24 to 72 hours. Usually my happy place for most things, especially with most indicus and kush type things, will be 48 hours, my friend. Oh, did you like the cooking show, Big Tree Farms? Anyone here who watched the cooking show, did you have fun with it? It's, I originally had hoped to shoot it with Typhoon TV, but like I was sharing, we didn't get what I wanted in it. So I wanted to have a slightly higher production value, make it a little fancier for all of you, but... I didn't get what I wanted, so I was like, well, 
I'll just shoot it myself a little bit more basically and we'll at least get the basic rough content that I wanted for that, so. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'd, I'd like to be fair, I've never heard about someone having such a violent reaction to a terpene or a flavonoid quite like that. Uh, to be honest with you, what you're experiencing is definitely an allergic reaction, in my opinion. Uh, so you're ha you're, 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 there's something in these strains, in terms of their chemical profile, that your body seems to be having a chemical reaction, an allergic reaction to, and it's just, you know, the body, when it has this reaction often too, is just like trying to get it out, right? So what's, what's one of the ways that our body does that? Well, it starts puking everywhere. Uh, but I've actually never heard of someone having quite that reaction that you're describing raw power. That's a new one for me. Um, I know that some people are allergic to bot. I've met people who are fairly allergic and will have respiratory issues to it. I've met people that get very severe skin reactions. Um, but yours is a new one, raw power. You might have a very rare allergic reaction to a very set certain terpene, flavonoid, cannabinoid, something in those specific strains that your body is just reacting to, but I've never actually quite seen what you're describing. So right now I'm merely making educated guesses out my ass, but it's it's intriguing though. I mean, it's very, I mean, the scientist in me would love to like test it, like, you know, not be mean, like kind of see what happens when you do ingest these things. It'll kind of suck for you, but my God, we could, we could check it out, we could experiment. Oh, I'm a big fan of bat guano. Bat guanos are my friend. There's three different bat guanos that I like to use. I believe, I'm trying to remember from my old recipes, because I haven't done this in years. I used Jamaican bat guano, bat guano from Central America, and where was the third one from? It may have been African. But I don't remember. I gotta check my notes in my books. Anyway, because different bats in different parts of the world have different, you know, the different types of bats, so they have different uh, diets, right? So if a bat eats a bunch of fruit, its poop does different things and has different kind of concentrates of nutrition in there, where if it's eating predominantly mostly insects, well, its poop's gonna have different nutritional elements as well. Some are good for veg, some are good for flour, etc., etc. Oh, Chris Barton, and it turned out really well too. Uh, the cinnamon beer loaf on its own even is quite nice. Uh, Jeremy Sparks, I put a lot of stuff in my stuff, but that's because I like potency. Um, for making a basic batch of cookies, you know, seven grams of pot even should do you. If it's good, decent pot, seven grams should do you okay uh, in terms of making a batch of uh, cookies. Hey, what's up, Ganja Wizard? How you doing? Dosage on what, Edwin the Bird Bee? I personally never had it happen. It's not a commonplace thing that any of us in Canada ever talk about. So no raw power, I have not. I've witnessed severe medical allergic reactions to cannabis in people here in Canada, but never people just puking off of it. Not like that. I've watched people puke when they green out from overconsumption, but that's a different story. That's what I was talking about too, country at her business. Yeah, so well, that's why I import from three different parts of the world, different diets. Kyle Homewood, you love the cooking show? Well, that's good. Hmm. It's intriguing raw power. I mean, it's I find it a very intriguing concept, what you're talking about. I'd love to experiment on you. I know that sounds horrible. I don't mean it in a bad way, but like, I would love to witness this. I, look, I mean, obviously I don't want you to be sick, but like, the scientific part of my brain is like, this is very intriguing. You know, I'd love to see it in action. Like, I don't want to watch my friend be sick, but the science part of me does. <laughs> Mm. 
Oh, it's a bit warm today. I don't like it. Uh, Jose Canelo says, How come my plants seem behind people say they veg for three weeks, but I'm going on five and I'm nowhere near ready? Uh, Jose Canelo, that could be a couple of things. One, uh, how big is your uh, uh, pot? If you're growing it in a pot, for example, how much available light do you actually have? What is the strain, etc.? So I need a bit more information about your setup before I can give comment to that. Typically, um, your number one issues are going to be pot size, also coupled with a not enough light, okay? That's going to be some of the most important stuff, obviously genetics aside, so we're going to negate the genetics for a second. Your pot's not big enough, you don't have enough light would be my number one guess. If you're underpowered in terms of your lighting systems, you're not going to be able to replicate the results that you're seeing on a lot of YouTube videos or on the internet. <laughs> Oh, raw power. I love that you weren't offended that I, uh, that I, my, the science part of me would love to see it. Just because I've never actually quite seen what you're talking about. How, here's a question, raw power. So let's say, hypothetically, you, yeah, it's when you smoke it, right? So let's say you smoke a joint of GDP. How fast are you going to react to smoking that? Like, how fast is that vomiting reaction that you're, you're talking about? How long does it take? Oh, population, uh, what you mean? I can't see how many people are in the chat right now because my stupid phone's not showing. It's not showing me, so I don't know. Okay, so Ryan Wagner, we talked about this uh, before. Um, one, they will be just a feminized seed. There will be a potential of having a higher rate of herming genetics in terms of those seeds, but not necessarily, okay? Um, some of the most powerful marijuana strains have come from hermy accidents. When we create feminized seeds, we're still forcing a plant to hermy, okay? That's how we're making feminized genetics or feminized beans, okay? So, for example, let's say this plant is the one that hermes. The seeds you find in this one will be definitely vastly more likely potentially to Hermy. That doesn't mean they're not worth checking out. But like this plant next to it, let's say, it doesn't Hermy. It just gets knocked up by this plant. These seeds will be more stable because they are coming from a mother plant that didn't Hermy in the same situation that the father glands on this plant did. So do you see how that works? But simply put, just because something came from a Hermy or came from a Hermy accident where you know a non-Hermy plant gets knocked up by a Hermy, that doesn't automatically make them garbage. It's just err on the side of caution in that we watch closely when we are playing with these beans and genetics, okay? But some of the strongest strains in the history of the indoor grow explosion starting late 60s, early 70s that have come forward have come from some of these experiments that were done after a huge her hermaphroditic shit the bed happened in a grow room, right? So, like Gorilla Glues, that's where they came from. That was a hermy fuck up. So I wouldn't worry too much. And Ryan, since you're fairly early in flower, uh, normally I don't recommend misting your plants during flower, obviously, but you're early enough that you could go through and give them a good spray down. Okay, just make sure your fans are going really well, and then once you spray them down, let it sit for a few seconds and shake some of the excess water off, but that'll help to neutralize some of the pollen that may be still trapped on some of those plants. I hope that helps. Jeremy Sparks, everyone. Thank you very much. One second here, I'm just trying to catch up here. Yeah, right, Ganja, Ganja Wizard, some of the best weed I've ever grown came from random bag seeds, too. Oh, I understand Country at Heart Finley. Oh, well, thank you very much, Country at Heart Finley. Yeah, she, she popped the question. I'm an engaged man now. Also, still got to get the marriage certificate from my first marriage, but from the Canadian government. 
But my, my first wife has passed away. We were separated for a number of years, but we we're still friends. And uh, but she's she's passed away, but she's German and died in Germany. So I actually still technically don't know where she's buried. The family went and buried her without my consent, even though I'm the legal next of kin, actually. So I actually have to go figure that out. That's one of the things I got to figure out before we get married. Um, if anyone's in Germany and you know wouldn't mind like giving me a phone call and giving me some help on figuring some stuff out over in Germany, I'd appreciate it. Because let's be honest, uh, I am not friends with her family. They don't like me, and I hate their fucking guts. They're horrible human beings. So, anyway, moving on. But yeah, just a personal note of pot points here. But yeah, I gotta get that done before I can get married again. But, uh, you know, it'll be a good time. <laughs> oh yeah, right? Yo Pops gets it. Uh, KSG, the last shot. Uh, hey, Podswatch, would it be possible to tag you on Instagram and maybe get a response about what each plant may be? <coughs> Not sure what these genetics are, but getting an idea if they're any good. Oh, yeah, no, fuck yeah, that's fine, KSG. <coughs> <coughs> and you don't actually ever have to ask about tagging me on something like, for example, Instagram. Like, um, I'm always happy, especially when I'm available to, 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 to try to donate my time to help people figure out their shit. Um, it is part of why I do what I do. Uh, nothing makes me happier than watching my fellow growers be successful and learning and having fun with growing weed titties. So happy to help, 100%. Never even worry about that. You're more than welcome to. Uh, and if I don't notice or answer right away, keep tagging me on shit. Harass me a bit. That's actually how Adam got my attention in the first place many moons ago. He just kept emailing me until I finally responded. <laughs> Hi, ah, Adam Squatch. Uh -huh. uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Ryan Wagner. Um, I don't know what to say to that. You're going to make me blush. Thank you very much. So it's within... Okay, so raw power. So it's not like you smoke a joint and then it happens. It's like... Let's say you're smoking it for a couple of days and then something's building up into your system to where you're eventually then having this sort of build up causing this then allergic reaction basically within your system. Yo, Rick DeRosa, baby, what's happening? Hey ho! If you said that earlier in the show and I didn't notice it, I apologize. Hell yeah, Ryan Wagner. Uh, it's, it's all right, country at Hart Finley. I mean, these things, I guess, happen. Uh, to share about my first first wife, brilliant writer. She struggled with borderline personality disorder. Fucking genius when it came to writing. And she wrote in such a high level of German that most German PhDs had to read it three times to even follow it. Um, and I didn't find out until months after it happened. It was weird, to be honest, how I actually, it's kind of a ghost story a bit that night a bit, too. Uh, the night where I finally realized kind of what had gone on, actually. Which we could share maybe that story a bit for you, but uh, if, if people would like. But, uh, yeah, you know. I blame her family, to be honest with you. You know, they were pretty pretty horrific human beings. Well, I, I you know, we don't need to get into what, what I'm referencing, but uh, we'll just leave it at that. Yeah, I doubt it. I highly doubt that her family's watching her, if they'd even realize it's me, but if they are... Hello, Sonia. Hello, Janos. Fick dich, du bist scheiße Menschen. Deine Tochter war so meine Frau. Und ich bin kommst uh, to Germany. And I'm going to deal with your ass. So guess what? It's coming on, baby. Hello. Anyway, just being silly. Just moving on. Uh, Piff 1000. How should I water using ProMix BX? Well, ProMix BX, I mean, I use their HP, obviously. Uh, I'm assuming the BX isn't too, too different than the HP. Um, I water it like any other basic soil medium that I would do, uh, based off of pot size, really. Uh, make sure you have proper drainage on the bottom. You know, I just usually use a, a hydroponic substrate, and I just throw that at the bottom of my pots, and that works great. Justin Rave, Pot Squatch! I'm using a Gavita 1650 LED, okay? Should I raise it during flower as they stretch or let them grow into it? I'm using a Strognet, answer please. Well, I will answer you. Uh, well, one, don't let them grow into it, okay? 
Uh, growing into it with LEDs, it still will eventually cause damage on your, your buds, right? Um, their tech is fairly similar to ours, so I can speak to it as if it were ours. I would be careful, like you can get fairly close with our lights, for example, to the buds, but if you have the room, I would say still keep it out at the back. You know, if you're wanting to maximize and hit it at that really intense par spot, maybe 12 inches above your canopy is good. Uh, but I wouldn't let them grow into it because you will eventually get scorching and damage to the tops of your buds if your tops grow into it. Okay, so I would be careful. <laughs> I hope that helps, Justin Reeve. Oh, it was Ganja Wizard. I still got about half the loaf left. I like it. <laughs> I love it. Sure, bro, bro. Sweet titties are fun to see. Well, yeah, because raw power, initially I would have been like, that would have been the first place scientifically I would look at. Is there pesticides or some form of chemical that's being introduced into the flower that's triggering you? Like, that'd be the first thing I would check. Sounds good, KSG, and never worry about such things. I'm happy to help. Oh, Country and Hurt Finley, you're totally cool. And guys, I'm a, I'm a pretty open book. Like, I mean, you know, you want to ask me about times I've almost died, when I was sick and had cancer, or when I found out my wife is dead, or my first wife was dead, right? Like, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm comfortable in myself that I don't mind sharing these parts of myself with you, and I'm happy to answer, right? Like, I mean, a big part of just being me and being open and being accessible is being open about who I am and, and where I've been and my story, right? So I, I, I personally don't mind people asking questions like that. It's completely okay. What question is that, Justin Rave? Oh, you're welcome. Excuse me. Robert Brisbois. How's it going, buddy? Good to see you. Big Tree Farms. That's local. I'm not sure which we're talking about, but probably the dead wife thing. But, uh, Shiza to the old in glass. Yeah, fix, fix them. They were shit, shit people, man. Hey, thank you very much, Hope Vasquez. How's the outdoor going down in LA for you, buddy? Thank you, uh, Mike the Safer Ride Squatch. Jose Canela, I, I'm still going to advocate, you know, 18 to 24 inches in, in sort of initial bed, right? Because you don't want to have them too, too far away because, like, they're going to know there's a greater par rating above them, and then they're going to start stretching out. Unless you're wanting them to do a huge stretch, then I say, fuck it, you know, definitely hang them up high. Make those plants stretch for you. It all depends on, on what you want. Uh, are airy buds less potent than dense buds? Uh, not necessarily, Gary Culver. Uh, it has to do with the plant in and of itself, because like I've seen really airy buds, so there's sort of certain phenotypes of a strain, let's say, that produces super airy buds, and they fucking suck in regards to that. That doesn't mean, though, that the trikes that are on said airy buds aren't producing fire cannabinoid levels. Uh, oh, and, and so, not necessarily, no. But, I mean, at the end of the day, we're working really hard, especially for indoor growing, there's a huge amount of cost, both in equipment, electricity, you know, if you pay for water where you live, right? And and a lot of things. So, you know, it's costing us money to produce these things inside. Uh, so that's why you're always going to be wanting to look out for genetics that you know are going to be good producers, going to be producing nice hard buds, nice big buds, um, or that are just producing something that you find so desirable that you're okay having a higher production cost on it. Uh, you know, something like the Hindu, for example, that just doesn't produce like other strains does. Uh, Robert Brisbois, that means that they're 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 feeling overwhelmed by the light at that time. Uh, often you'll see this in young plants. So they're doing a thing, like they were like this and then they went like that, right? They're actually trying to avoid the light's intensity. So just pull your light back a bit. Uh, or you can put a bit of a scrim over them as they mature as young babies, and then once they're ready, then they will be not they won't do that anymore.
hey, you know, Raw Power, if you ever found yourself in the west coast of Canada, man, we could definitely play around and do some experimentations. We could make some fun videos. I'll get my lawyers to draw up some actual consent forms and all of that so you can't sue me. I mean, we're just playing with weeds, but still, better to be safe. Oh, one second here. There we go. But yeah, I mean, if you're ever in Canada, man, like, definitely, man, I'll, I'll, we could do an episode where I... I'll bake an entire three-course meal or something and make it super infused and we'll see what happens. That could be a fun experiment. <laughs> Hell yeah, you know, Hobe sometimes, you know, when the when the light is too intense where you are, doing a bit of a scrim over that is not a bad thing. What was the most I ever got from a plant? It was a four and a half pound plant, uh, Lobster Boy. That was on my uh, uh, Northern Lights Master Kush cross. Uh, this one specific pheno, which is like a super, super mother pheno, uh, you could get her up stupidly high inside. And she wouldn't even have to be that big. Maybe about four or five feet wide to about four feet tall. But yeah, I, I got four and a half pounds off that thing consistently when I had enough light power and fuck. It was cool, man. Uh, crop kind. Do you mean crop king? Crop king seeds blow fucking donkey ass. I hate them. Don't ever use them. They used to be kind of okay, like, 15 years ago. Uh, but, no, they suck, man. I have had nothing but horrible experiences in many years and many moons, so, uh, just avoid those, guys. That's not me being a dick. That's me speaking to a lot of experience with them. And I'm not trying to be mean. They just fucking blow. I don't know whether it's how they're storing them, are they all just super old, and then even when they do pop, the phenos and the genetics are just fucking wonky, they suck, they don't produce, they don't give you good phenos. Um, I've had horrible experiences, and as have many pot swatches and many grower friends of mine, actually, so. I like drinking raw power, I'm a drinker. Yes, it's part of my family, it's how I grew up, but I like drinking. I enjoy the experience. I enjoy alcohol in my system, and I also enjoy the taste. But yeah, everything's toxic for you in this world. So I say, do what you want, with everything in moderation, and say, fuck it, and have a good time. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and this is with super, super tiny, thin stalks. Look at how tiny these little stalks are in the bottoms of these plants. That's what the whole point of this experiment has been, to show you with the bottom binding trick with lollipopping and, 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 and manipulating the plant to feel like it is comfortable within itself, right? Like, that's the whole point of this experiment. That, that's done with basically no veg. <laughs> <coughs> Oh, I don't know about that, Justin Brave, but thank you for your kind words. Jason Hooligan, get yourself a shop vac. That's why mine always lives right here. I've got mine right here on the floor right here. Your best friend. Get a shop vac, wet vac, buddy. Or wet dry vac, as it were. It will be a great investment. You can usually get a tiny little one, like, you know, a little two and a half gallon one for like 30, 40, 50 bucks. And it is a great investment. Brother Rick 702, um, bud washing it totally has its uses and purposes, particularly more so in terms of outdoor, but it does have its uses sometimes inside as well. Uh, so bud washing, it's interesting. Um, I prefer to have my grow not go the way where that's gonna happen um, in terms of indoors, but outdoors, for example, I would bud wash anything I did outdoors. Ah, uh, yeah, no, that sounds about like my experience with them, Kyle Homewood. Uh, the Turpinator is more so going to up your terpene levels. Um, I actually haven't played with the Turpinator product yet. That's actually one of the ones on my list next to play with. I've played with their resin product. Um, I've played with Vita Thrive. I've played with a number of other things, but, and like Liquid Weight. Uh, but the Turpinator is one I haven't tried yet, but I definitely want to play with that one next.
Well, that's the thing, too. I mean, part of why I wanted to do this experiment the way we did it well, was, one, it's fun. I like fucking around with shit. I get really bored if I do everything the same way every time. But, two, um, I wanted to show what these techniques do. Now, imagine if you combine the techniques that we did this time with actually allowing it to transition into that 20 gallon. Imagine if we topped a number of more times and did some greater training. Maybe some knuckling, maybe some this, maybe some that, right? Um, allowing those stocks to actually develop properly. Imagine what you could do with the techniques then, right? That's all I'm saying. Uh, Isaac Johnson, I've never used True North Seeds, so I don't have one. And to be fair, I'm not really, I've, I've vaguely heard the name a few times from other people, but like, let's be honest, I've never actually, I, well, I don't have a memory, at least in my head, that I've talked to someone who's used them. So, I mean, I'm not much of one, to be honest. One second here, playing catch up here. Uh, Oliver Carvalho, uh, they're probably hungry for both a little bit of nitrogen, but also some secondaries of calcium and magnesium. Uh, introduce some calcium and magnesium. Um, if they're early on in flower at transition, that's totally fine. I would actually recommend using coffee and a bit of molasses as a quick uh, application there to get them looking a little happier and healthier. Hell yeah, buds on a budget. I've checked that out, my friend. Uh, Peter Vigna, you could do that, right? Because, I mean, but you just got to make sure that you're wiring the right connector. So, like, we're assuming that you're buying another meanwhile driver, right? And then you're going to plug that into that one. Uh, you're going to have to obviously wire it properly to the thing. But, oh, yeah, totally. Because that's what we're doing. We're wiring it to a driver with the proper head, right? Most meanwhile drivers have a single fucking feed coming out of it, right? We've just got ours going into two. So, you could totally do that, 100% as long as you wire it properly. And it's not rocket science to do. I mean, I'm not great at it, but I mean, um, I've done it before. Not on a, not on one of our lights, but on other lights before we started making these. But yeah, te technically, yeah, technically speaking, yeah, 100% possible. Main Street in Vancouver, KSG? There's a Main Street in Vancouver, and that's the one I know, so that's why I'm asking. Are you in Vancouver? I thought you were somewhere else. I am old school, but I'm also very new age. I'm a mix of both. I have both old school and new school conceptual ideas on things. Of course you can, Jose. But you can't get a lot of them. Well, actually, that's a lie. Do a high-stress training, snap the fuck out of the top of your plant, bind it down, and then all your secondary side branches will come up on their own. That will give you... I've done that before and gotten up to 17 tops that way, uh, and that was with zero topping. That was done on a Master Kush Northern Lights bush. Oh yeah. There we are. Do, 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 do. Ah. Whoa. Oop. No. Stupid fucking. There we go. Uh, oh, fucked up. There we go. Ah, stupid tornado. I'm sorry about that, Jeremy Sparks. What's up, Midnight? Okay, you got a question. All right, so what's your question? Question. <coughs> uh, what's your opinion on these UFO balloon boosters? I bought two from eight LED and see no difference at all in bigger buds. Starting to think it's a croc. Do you mean the UFO, like the original old back in the day 
consumer level lights that were first sort of hitting around? Like, are you talking UFO lights? Fuck, are they still around? Ha! I thought they were gone the way of the dinosaur years ago. Um, if they're talking about like a, 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 an add-on of like a bloom quote-unquote booster in terms of being a light, like are we talking about a light from UFO? Like, I, cause I remember them back in the day. I played with them many moons ago. So give me a little bit more information midnight and I'm happy to answer. Uh, Gonja Wizard, roughly, uh, roughly four or five days more with lights on and then a 48 hours of darkness and then it'll be time to cut down, dry, and keep working. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Pope Vasquez, what tells you not to flush? Your nudes? I'd always flush. I don't listen to anybody. I do what I want. MD. I love him. Long time listener or viewer, first time caller. Laugh my fucking ass off. Howdy, folks. What's up, Kem D? <laughs> that was funny. I like it. Oh, it was good, King Spinnable. Uh, it was very tasty and very good. Uh, I definitely cut it in the right way so I didn't accidentally fuck my brain so I couldn't function for the rest of the day. <laughs> Uh, no, Jason Hulihan, it's next year. So, um, Texas Squatch is getting married next year in April. So it'll be April 10th uh, that he's get or April 20th that he's getting married. He's getting married on 420 next year. So Uncle Pot Squatch is going to fly down to Texas for 420 next year uh, and marry Texas Squatch and his wife to be. Oh, you're not wrong, Stanton Dinger. I've had certain certain strains that aren't hungry that much like they can get by with very little um and then like that bubble gum i don't know if any of you have watched you know back when we were running a lot of that bubble gum back in the day but fuck did that phenotype of that bubble gum ever get hungry like early into flour like if you didn't start at weeks one one in a bit giving it high levels of potassium magnesium um it would be pissed off destroying its own fan leaves. The cannibalization would set in quick and happen in a matter of days. Like it was, but if you hopped on the feeding really early on, never had any issues. What's up, Joseph Harlow? How you doing? Okay, so red bloom booster. Okay, so if it's just a far red add-on, okay, far reds are more of a bell and a whistle than a primary super boost required. 3500 Calvin color as a chip on its own is all you really need in terms of how lighting tech is right now. Um, when will far reds play more of a point? Well, the far reds aren't going to be increasing things in a huge way, but like let's say one day we get to where we're creating 2600 par on our lights okay 2600 par is the average par rating of the sun on the planet well what does that mean well basically with leds at that point in terms of tech right we will have been able to mimic the sun we've matched the sun now okay once that happens then all of these secondary wavelengths of light that will trigger a bit of a little bit of extra bloom or a little bit extra triking or a little bit extra this and that will become more of a thing. But they'll still never be this huge like night and day shift. That's where a lot of these obsessions with far red and this or that, it's a little over the top because it's more of a bell and whistle uh, uh, light wavelength anyway. Until we get to 2600 par, which is the rough, like I said, average of the sun, they're more bells and whistles. They are doing something, but there's not. it's not doing this whole, like, oh, my God, I got, like, so much more weight because I used that. Fuck off. You know what I mean? Like, it's just silly. And that's just the honest-to-God truth, okay? Don't believe me? Go check out the light guy from the University of Utah. The guy's a fucking walking genius of wavelengths of light 
in horticulture and in terms of how it relates to cannabis. Walking fucking encyclopedia the man is. Remo is definitely an old school, uh, prolific, original Canadian YouTuber. I will definitely give you that, man. I would like to meet him. He's actually not far. Remo lives fairly close to where we live. He's only about a 45 minute to an hour drive from my house, to my knowledge. It'd be cool to meet him. It'd be really cool. Because, I mean, you know, he was one of the first true big Canadian pot YouTubers. Then he went and did a whole bunch of other stuff and, and blew up in his own special ways. So it'd be cool to meet him. I, I'd like to meet Remo. I'm curious to see if he's like how he is in his videos in real life. That's what I'm curious about. I'd like to meet him. I'd be curious too. Get a picture of us both wearing sunglasses. Like. <laughs> I'm not a fan of his nudes, I'm not going to lie to you, I don't like his nudes very much, but but that's just me, and I like what I like. And let's be honest, nutrient systems are nutrient systems. All main well-established companies, yeah, you know, they're all making good shit, right? Like, I'm just more of a fan of Green Planet, but that's just me. Um, I just find Green Planet more conducive to my plants and be easier going on my plants, and my plants seem to be able to uptake things a little bit easier with them. Uh, than when I played around with Remo's news. But, I mean, that's just a point of taste. If we're all doing everything the exact same goddamn way, one, YouTube weed or channels would be boring as fuck because it's all the fucking damn same. And also, we'd all get really bored as growers if we did everything the same all the time. And we all did it exactly the same. Couldn't have cannabis cups. There'd be no competition. There'd be nothing! You know what I'm saying? All right, so for thripes and other small things, send in pre predatory mites. Uh, I get some praying mantises to take out the other shit. Uh, so yeah, introduce predatory mites and a bunch of thripes, or <laughs> predatory mites and a bunch of uh, praying mantises would be my recommendation there uh, for you, Mountain Mike, in terms of a way uh, to, to do it. I'm not really aware of him much, to be honest with you, Peter Vigna. I don't really know his son. But yeah. Jesus Christ, where's the mighty slash Dynavap? What? What's that mean even, Jesus? What's that mean, Jesus? I mean, for silica, typically I just use uh, Dynamation's Earth, to be honest with you, if I want to. Excuse me. Hey, thank you very much, Reef Wilson. Thank you for tuning in, my friend. I hope you have a wonderful day at work. May the weed titties be with you. Not sure how much of hair caught at the end of my joint, but... Oh, I can feel you, Jeremy Sparks, and I can understand that. Don't worry. Whether it's a short time or long time, just watch your time, be a good boy, as it were, and you'll be off, and you'll be good to go and ready to rock and roll. You know what I'm saying? What's up, John, boy? Yeah, there's a lot of people over in the UK in the Fox Force Growers Army. I mean, that's why I'm looking forward to when the world kind of hopefully goes back a bit to normal is uh, me and Mrs. Podsquatch want to kind of come over to Europe and do a whole, you know, European tour. I think that'd be a lot of fun. I love Europe, right? That's where, like, if I'm going to go travel somewhere, typically I go to Europe. That's my thing, right? Like, I've been doing it since I was eight. I uh, lived there my life. Uh, Joseph Harlow, probably the earliest time to talk would be when you have at bare minimum at least six or seven nodes in my humble two cents. Uh, but, for example, I've seen plants, for example, where you'll get to like six or seven nodes and it's still like this big. We could top it then, right? It's, it's all point of taste, right? Wait till you have at least 
six or seven node development sections to the plant, and then you can start fucking with it. Nice, man. I've never tried their stuff, Kefty. Ah, gotcha, Jesus Christ. I follow. I'm not a big fan of uh, independent... Now, are they independent handhelds? Because I don't like independent handheld vape units for flour. Uh, extracts, they're fine. I like the Evolve Plus. Not the big fancy four-coil one. It's a piece of shit. Costs more and it sucks. I still like the old school dual quartz uh, crystal coils. Uh, uh, Evolve Plus is great for doing my little raws in there. I, I like them. Hey, that's right, Justin Brave. I'm glad you're here, my friend. Jerry Loki, nice bro from St. Louis. Nice, man. How's it going down to St. Louis? Well, there you go, Justin Rave. I mean, that's the thing. That's the trick. You want to be a successful grower? One, be passionate. Two, daily gardening. Three, never stop learning. Always be open to ideas doesn't mean certain ideas you hear them and you're going to know they're bullshit. That's part of being educated. But keep an open mind, though, an educated open mind, and, and always keep learning, keep experimenting, keep playing around. And that is the true grower. A true grower is always growing as a grower, not just literally, but metaphorically in terms of your skill sets, your ideas, your approach to it. And remember, it's both a passion piece, it's science, it's holistic, um, true artisanship for growing and producing cannabis is a, is a bunch of different things. Um, and I, I'm a big believer in that, right? So just keep the, le the, the learning journey going and you'll have a great, great career and a lot of fun, you know? Hell yeah, Jeremy Sparks. Congratulations, my friend. Oh, dude, yeah, I'll definitely pop through fucking Cheshire, uh, Chris Bird. Actually, my friend Stocko, uh, you know, his nickname for many years, we called him the Cheshire Kid. Because um, he was kind of in between Liverpool and Manchester, like kind of the Cheshire area there. And uh, fuck, man, buddy, like when he first came the first time to Canada, then he went back for a few years, now he's back living here again. But when I first met him many moons ago, Fuck, would he, he had a thick accent. Like my dad couldn't understand him. I, I understood him just fine, but if I'd actually have to like translate him from my dad, it was pretty funny. But I love I love that part. I love most of the UK, to be honest with you. And I love pubs, right? Like I'm a big pub guy. I love going around and eating lasagna and curries in pubs, or fish and chips and drinking, hanging out with the locals. Like I don't want to go to a big party in any European country typically. I want to go sit in a local little watering hole, hang out with the real people of the place. I mean, that to me is what a vacation is. That to me is how I get to see, even just pulling off that family. Wow, sorry, distracting myself. You know, that's, that's seeing the culture and places and people, just sitting down, you know. That's, that's a good time for me. Uh, Justin Ray, that's super simple. You just gonna need to build yourself a little CO2 breather system utilizing yeast, okay? Uh, you can also do it with dry ice and do a bunch of other things. Dry ice, obviously, you'd have to have like a sufficient cooler to keep it on hand so it doesn't actually evaporate on you. And then you would just, you know, add a bit into either some water if you wanted to do an intense one or just let it naturally evaporate on its own. CO2 in general is heavier than oxygen, so as long as you top mount something, it will then sink through your plants. Uh, but doing a yeast based uh, excretion systems, very quite simple. I mean, I built one that was overcomplicated in terms of basic design, to be honest with you. Well, not really. Uh, the only difference between that video that I made is, is make sure you put some actual UV protection or light protection on there, uh, just because that will kill the yeast. So the yeast culture will last a hell of a lot longer if you, you know, just fuck, even just spray paint the damn thing or you know wrap it in duct tape or some shit, keep the light out. But it's super simple though. And doing a system that's a breather system from like yeast based like that, uh, help a lot safer than you know actually doing a CO2 canned injection system which you can accidentally kill yourself with. So, right. Who needs sunscreen? I do. I do burn instantly. I hate the sun. I don't even like going in at once. 
I avoid it at all costs if I can. Hey, YouTube country at heart, Finley. Thank you for tuning into the show, and I hope Ashley feels better soon. Give her my best. Oh, totally. Gardening's also good for your own personal mental health. Except for when you're stressed about stuff. You know what I'm saying? Might grow some hair. Ah, me? Nah. I've accepted that the hair through here is pretty much gone. I think I got a bit of a baboon ass in the back too a bit. Yep, look at that. Yep. What are you gonna do? <laughs> well, we're aware of that, Stan. But I mean, you know, if we want to go with a little bit more CO2, then we're we're gonna be breathing out in terms of the grow system here, or when we're in the grow lab or grow area. Oh, some of the best bar fights I've ever been in were in England. Good times. Yeah, no, Scooby Steve, it totally is a legit thing. And, you know, everyone who's ever really tried it loves it. You know what I mean? Um, so, it's very much a legitimate thing. A lot of people are like, oh, really? Really? Are you sure it's actually a thing? And I'm like, look, don't believe me, okay? Don't take my word for it. Try it yourself. I'll talk to you in two weeks when you do all right no it's legit and it's a fun little simple way to do some fun wonderful maximizations of certain things you know just moving out uh over here uh i don't feed you little rocket by ppm so uh but i feed quite heavily uh at times when i'm in mid to later flower and i'm doing a big feed day well i can hit them pretty hard but i don't feed by ppm i'm old school that way I do a custom mix for each plant. Sometimes I tweak things a little bit for each individual plant based on what I'm seeing in terms of what I call quote unquote plant psychology. Da, da, da. Ooh, it's fucking warmer and shit here. Oh, I think it's about 34, 35 degrees potentially right now. Pretty fucking hot. What's up Suburban Life? How you doing my friend? It is piss time, Ganja Wizard, but I'm gonna have a smoke first. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, what's 35 Celsius in Fahrenheit? I don't know. Uh, Michael Aisha says, what is the pink uh, kush turd profile like? Uh, I want to make sure I really got what it said to be. Anything would be helpful. Okay, uh, Michael Aisha, when I say the word, or when I say something smells cushy, do you understand what the, like a general cushiness in general smells like? Because if you can understand that basic idea, then I can build that, my, my interpretation of the true pink kush, because that's what I have here. Um... I can try to describe it to you. Uh, so it's got a basic cushiness. It's not like the old school super cush dankness. It's got a softer, sweeter, uh, um, rounded smell to it. It's totally still a cushy smell. Um, I'd say it's almost got, not like a sat gassy, but there is a subtle gassiness to it. But really, at the end of the day, the secondary notes after that cush funk with a bit of gas to it, it's got this very sweet finish uh, that has its own almost secondary funkiness that would be secondary to that first kind of funk. Um, can any deficiencies cause drooping? Well, well, yeah. I mean, what kind of drooping are we talking? Are we talking just like subtle drooping? Or are we talking like... Bleh. What's up, Jeremy Sparks? How you doing, my friend? Yes, I did, Jason Houlihan. I won't lie to you. Uh, oh, Stanton Digger, I understand now. I understand. Oh, yeah. That's probably where I get mine. I live out in the woods now. And it's pretty simple because 
I just hop on Amazon. I order some, you know, I like pop poppers. Those are the ones that are available to me. They come in a bunch of different sizes. I can pick my thing, but pop poppers are great. Big fan of pop poppers. They work great. Um, you know, from any any real soil bound past, it'll fuck their day up pretty good. So definitely the the fan of it. Uh, seed to soil, these would be sitting at roughly eight and a half weeks right now. Ah, Jeremy Sparks, beneficial nematodes are microscopic worms. Uh, you introduce them into your soil. Um, what they're going to do, okay, is basically, let's say like fungus snap larvae, for example, will start living and propagating in your soil. The eggs get laid in the soil. They hatch into larvae. Eventually, that little weird larvae is going to grow wings and then become a, an adult fungus stand. But as they're moving through that soil, they're munching on your roots and stuff like that. But they're munching through this. So these microscopic worms now are actually going to move through that, that larvae's mouth. It's going to release crap into it to kill it, but then also to break its body down as uh, good food for said beneficial nematodes. So they're basically microscopic worms that you're sending in to protect and fight your, your, for your crop. You know what I'm saying? Uh, PT, you could definitely do really well in a three gallon pot. I normally say though, and typically, yeah, like, I mean, if, if you're doing really well in three gallons, I would encourage you to go try doing the same shit in a 10 gallon. Go with a big, nice long bench window with the same exact genetics you've been rocking. Look out, uh, look at the difference, my friend. It'll be a good time. Oh, I know. Jason Houlihan, beneficial nematodes are one of my favorite, wonderful little things ever. You still think Ryan Reynolds and I are related? I mean, you know, in theory we could be, but I'm not. I'm pretty sure someone in my family, if if we had some family connection to Ryan Reynolds, would say so. I'd still like to meet him one day, though. That'd be kind of cool. It's weird seeing a Canadian ever having any real form of success as an actor. So every time it happens, once in a blue moon, it's excited. Uh, no, Ryan Vagba, I don't. But I hit pretty hard with a lot of sugars during my feeds during flowers. So, you know, even when my flushing is happening and I'm removing a lot of that stuff, like I'm still getting a decent kind of sugary froth out of some of my mediums still, which is, well, let's be honest, it's indicative of me hitting with that liquid weight and last and a few other things pretty heavily, you know, for a while. So. You know, Justin Rave, I mean, I had the occasional fungus gnat issues in my apartment in Vancouver, but never had any issues at all for like 18, 19 years. But then when I moved out here, I basically live in the woods, like literally three minutes there, boom, I'm in the open bush, right? So there's a lot more bugs out here. So that was definitely a bit of a learning curve for me when I first moved out here, but it's doing okay now. 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Thank you, Stanton Dinger. It's about uh, 13 degrees hotter than I like it to be. In term, not Fahrenheit Celsius. So 13, I think it's three degrees Fahrenheit, roughly to a uh, degree Celsius. So then, if it's 13 degrees Celsius, that would be 39 degrees too hot in Fahrenheit for me. <laughs> yes, Cedar Soul Rockstar Kush originated from where I come from. It's a BC strain. We made it up. Of course, the internet's probably gonna tell you something different, but nope, we've been growing that shit for a long time. Rockstar Kush came from here. Rockstar Kush is a very common staple strain in terms of BC growers and has been for many, 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 many years. We're actually going to be bringing some of that in on the channel and growing some true old school Rockstar Kush for you. We're going to be doing some old school proper Bubba from BC as well for you. Uh, we're going to be bringing in a few other interesting things, some pink Cadillac, I think, just to play around with it. Um, something called Rock 9, which is being called phenotype number nine of rockstar but i mean okay there wasn't nine phenos in the original workings back in the day so i'm thinking it might be a reworked version of the genetic but they're calling it rock nine so i'll check that out too just for fun but yeah so we're going to be doing that for a while uh, when it comes in we're going to play with it for you but yeah rockstar is a kush it's called rockstar kush seed to soul Sweet dreams, Gonja Wizard. May you have wonderful uh, dreams and good rest. Uh, que on the uh, padre. How's it going, my friend? Que on the padre. What's up with you? 
yesterday you ate a brownie and you still feel sick. What kind of sickness are you feeling? Are you feeling nausea? Are you feeling are you feeling green out greened out or who was my teacher? I didn't have one. I taught myself through trial and error. I didn't know anyone who really grew back in the day. Like I've had I've had friends that I've learned things from later on in my career, but for the first solid seven or eight years of growing, I taught myself. I just read. Um, I would experiment with everything, learn from my mistakes. So, but no, I'm self-taught. Uh, what kind of what kind of sickness are you feeling, Padre? Uh, Gary Cole or Kyler Kyler. Uh, I actually answered that question earlier on. I don't know if you were the one who asked it, uh, but not necessarily. Not necessarily. It all depends on the genetic and what they are. So not necessarily. Nice seed to soul. Yeah, no, it's it's a very prominent thing. I'd say Rockstar in and of itself, I would say there's probably three or four different versions of it now that have kind of gone off in their own ways in terms of BC and are available. Um, I prefer the old school ones a little bit more myself. Uh, the old original ones back in the hood days when we were first playing with it uh, was pretty astonishing. Um, you should have seen the way these things striked out, man. Um, and it's my hopes that this rock star we're bringing in will be like will be like the originals or as it should be i mean these guys have been a lot of their genetics have been doing these clones for a long fucking time right so um we're hoping uh nausea and very lazy don't know what to do nothing in deep thoughts okay so uh it sounds like que on the padre to me one it was probably no that's totally okay padre um i'll try to speak a little bit slower it sounds like you've eaten a very high dose edible okay um, and potentially your system is, is a little sensitive to that as well. So, um, you know, what you're experiencing now is the rare, but it can be a thing for some, uh, kind of like a pot hangover, okay? Um, just know that everything will pass. Right now, all that brownie did, it was high dosage. It's altered your body's chemistry a bit. Um, it's going to reset, okay? So drink lots of water. Um, the nausea, um, I like to drink some ginger ale, a little bit of ginger ale, or you can take some ginger root, make a nice little ginger tea for your tummy. Uh, that'll help to calm it down a little bit, okay? Um, to make a basic ginger tea, just take a little bit of ginger root, a little bit of apple, do you? Um, and if you want, you can also put a little bit of honey in there. Uh, that's going to help to coat the, the stomach lining a bit and soothe that with the ginger when you drink that down. Okay, and just time is the main thing. So keep yourself hydrated, even if, you know, the nausea hopefully will go away. Uh, it's about waiting it out, but keep yourself hydrated and obviously try to eat something. I know you're not feeling great, but, you know, even if it's just like a simple broth of a soup of some sort, um, and it will go away and you'll feel, you'll feel much better very soon, I promise. Hey, welcome back, Marco Godesa. Sounds good. I'll see you Wednesday, Jeremy. I haven't personally... Well, I've smoked it, uh, Stanton. I've never I've never grown 9-pound hammer, but I have smoked it, though. East school bomb. No worries, uh, que onda padre. I'm happy to help my friend, and that's a very valid question, and especially if that's where you're at and that's what you're experiencing right now. Um, I, I, I'm glad we were here to, to help you because I've been there too. I've, I've eaten too much pot before a number of times. There's been some funny times where, you know, I remember Biker Squatch's uh, lady uh, made this big cake, so they gave me like a giant hunk of it. I got drunk in a live stream, and I ate the whole thing at the end of a live stream extremely high dose i felt fine for the coming next hours but then i went to bed and then i woke up in the middle of the night and i was like oh yeah you know i can't sleep i'll go for a cigarette so I, you know i get up to go for a smoke and all of a sudden i'm trying to walk down the hall my heart's racing i'm super dizzy and i'm like oh no i'm stroking out or having a heart attack or something right so i like stumble back to the bedroom and i'm like Honey, I think I'm stroking out early. I think I'm having a heart attack or something. She's like, no, you dumbass. You ate the entire fucking weed cake last night. Oh. Okay, 
okay, bye, I'm fine, okay, bye. <laughs> it was pretty funny. I've had a, a, a few different, I've had a few different uh, interchanges that have been like that. I remember when I tried these new Dislet candies my buddy's company was making, and these were like super premium lab-tested Dislet candies. These ones were 30s, they said. They said. So I ate two of them. I, I, I can normally hold my edibles pretty good, you know, with some of the best of them. And I ate two of these things, these original ones. They taste horrible, but oh my God. I, I mean, I, I did the mistake of eating them before bed too, right? So I, I ate them before bed. They sat in my stomach and they kept going. And then I wake up in the middle of the goddamn night just like greening out severely. Like we're talking panic attacks, sweats, shakes. The world's out to get me. Oh, my God. But then I'm quite seasoned. So I'm like, oh, you're greening out. This is all bullshit. It will pass. Don't worry. You know, kind of a thing. It was just funny. Um, it wasn't the funnest night of all time, but I mean, you know, things taste like shit, but at least they work. <laughs> Unless you're using a sublingual absorption, Jason Huland. That's why I'm a big fan of RSO tinctures, which we will release a video to make them how I make them these days. Uh, it's very simple and they are one of the most effective things I've ever actually come up with making uh, in terms of both for medical application, recreational, recreational application, uh, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, no, they're great, but, uh, and they don't affect you that way. I actually find the most, the, the most p positive version of the, the pot medicine to, to combat anxiety or someone not feeling well. Um, even if you're someone who typically will smoke certain, a lot of different types of pot or smoke too much and you get anxious, uh, will be orally dissolvable cannabis. So if you make a hard rock candy with RSO, that absorbs through soft tissues your mouth sublingually. So it's going from the blood vessels here into your brain. It doesn't need to go through the system like a traditional edible. Or the RSO tincture, same fucking thing. And my God, it feels good. Best thing for an anxiety attack, I'll tell you. What happened to quitting smoking? Well, one, I started smoking cigars, but then COVID happened, and uh, I'm on very tight budgets these days. So, uh, one, too expensive. My cigars that I was smoking were very expensive. Not expensive cigars, but just to actually smoke them was expensive. Um, these are cheap. These are added to free all-natural tobacco, so they're not a government-made cigarette. They're not like that. So, they're in theory, I guess. Uh, better for me. Uh, better than the government chemical-filled crap, but... I'm not really worried about it. I'll always smoke a little bit. That's just me. Uh, Mr. Tyler Macon. You can buy drip trays at any, like, you can go to a normal hardware store or grow shop. Anything that's a general drip tray. Uh, I just buy them, right? So, and if you're looking for stuff to not buy things, you can use lids from five-gallon buckets. You can use garbage lids. You can use Rubbermaid lids. Anything that's going to securely capture enough of that moisture and give you a bit of room on it uh, so that, you know, it's not going to have a huge runoff and you're going to be fucked. Nice haircut, Squatch. Well, it's not a haircut. I haven't shaved my head. This is me being lazy. <laughs> I did tame the sides of the beard a few weeks ago, though. Removed a considerable amount of side shit off my head. Pretty old cool there, though. Uh, Stanton Dinger, just wondering if it got bigger yields of the claims. Uh, as what? Sorry, Stan. What are we talking about? Oh, well, thank you, Chris Barton. I'm glad it helped. No, it works, man. And I mean, it's just, I mean, I'm not going to make videos. And if I'm making a video on something I'm trying new for the first time, like, I'll tell you that in the video. But like, I mean, I, I was a head chef. I was a baker. I have fucked around with eating cannabis and cooking cannabis a lot. So that's part of why we wanted to release the cooking show. And we'll keep playing with that kind of stuff. And, you know, we're going to do a weekly cooking episode now. Uh, it's going to be a good time. I'll have to take your word for that, Scuba Steve. I'd have to double check that one to be able to, uh, you know, confirm that. But I don't feel the need to. Sounds good. I've got a feeling you're reading that out of a scientific article, or you just 
memorized it. So that sounds good, Scuba Steve. I'm assuming it just, you know, gonna give us an extra left hook, maybe. You know, Kelly Wilkins, some strains will resist ambering quite sufficiently in hardcore. Uh, so if you're going to run this again next time, no, you can feed a lot later. Okay. Um, if you're still wanting to go, I, I say just keep riding it then. Uh, I'd say keep flushing, keep riding. Give up on trying to ever reintroduce feed. You're going to have a really nice flush on it, though, uh, which might hurt weight a bit. But, I mean, that's okay. It's about learning about the genetic, right? So, but some things will resist ambering quite hard. Uh, what strain is it though? Or is it a sandy type of a thing or? Uh, oh, uh, do you mean the one from the episode where I talked about the olive oil there with the rosin? Or do you mean the olive oil based tinctures? I think we talked about that too. I still, I, I will still, I bought more medicine bottles the other day. Troy, big shout out to Troy Squatch there. He's a local pot squatch out here and he's my buddy. And uh, no, he went and uh, he's got a store that he can get like a lot of different glass things. So I got these beautiful new glass bottles. Uh, these ones are also UV protected. Uh, instead of being brown, like the last ones we were using, these ones are blue and they're pretty. They came from more of a hippie type store, so of course the blue and the pretty, but they'll still work for protecting the inside things and the pretty, so. But anyway, we've got lots of bottles and we're ready to make that video in terms of that, so that'll be good. Um, so I'll get that out for you soon too. Plus we're gonna be making that video on Gazer's natural insecticide out of rhubarb grains. Whew. One second here, everybody. Turn on the light. There we are. Actually, I have to piss now. It's the one drawback of diuretics during your show. You have to pee. For those of you just tuning in, don't freak out. This is actually a common occurrence and has been for quite some time. We call it live streaming during the live stream. Dun, 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 diuretics, diuretics. They make you pee. They make you pee. Oh, I'll be with you in a moment, everyone. Just a moment. Da, 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 da. All right. I've definitely had a few beers. Ah, oh, there we go. All right. Nice one. Woo. But it's a hot, bloody day, I'll tell you, everybody. Today is a hot, bloody day. Woo! Not looking forward to it, but in a couple of days, we're supposed to get a little bit of rain, and it'll cool down a little bit here. Betty, it's okay. Calm down. One thing that the puppies seem to struggle with is they seem to struggle with the concept that we do actually have a few neighbors, and, you know, hey, they have dogs, too, and they're kind of allowed to walk out past the house, but then they see them. And they freak out. Yeah, Betty, I know you do. I know you do. Yeah. Woof to you. She's a very mouthy puppy. What? Well, what was that? I think they need to pee. You need to pee? Go outside? Okay. Well, guys, ladies and gentlemen, these days, we're not ending it. We'll end it soon, but if you don't mind me taking the dogs out, we'll take the dogs out. Jesus, I'm coming, guys. Come on now. Let's go pee. There we go. Be good puppies. We're going pee. We're not barking at neighbors. We're going pee. There we go, guys. Go to the washroom. You can all keep talking, by the way. I can read while I'm doing this. I'm just reading everyone's uh, uh, messages while I was pissing. 
Uh, nope, Mr. Tyler Macon, we are our own lighting brand. Our little company has released a lighting uh, brand uh, called Squatch Lighting Systems, powered by Soul Strip. Our partner company is Soul Strip down in California, my friend. Go pee, dogs. Go pee. Well, while we're out here, got a bunch of crazy tomato plants going just for the fun of it. Give them a little bit more water. It's been a hot day for them there. Lots of tomatoes going on. This one's a jungle. I've been tying her back slowly, but, you know, just tons of weights of tomatoes. Lots of weight of tomatoes in here. Still waiting for them to actually ripen up. They've been slow starting. Puppies, go pee. Go pee. No. No, puppies, no. Oh, heck yeah. No, they weren't bad, Mr. Tyler Macon. We're doing vastly better now. Definitely producing better now, I'll tell you that. So, yeah, check them out there. Mike, could you... Sh uh, say oh, Mike already did. He beat me to it. Never mind. So, yeah, check out our lights there. The new racks are going to be releasing very soon, Mr. Tyler Macon. Okay, puppies. Go pee. Come on now. outside with the dogs it's actually quite cute so i've got my workshop on the other side of this little storage side to this shed here we've got like a family of raccoons that lives in there it was funny you know a couple of, you know the other day i walked in and then you know uh one second i tuned in uh to the workshop to get some stuff and then there's this cute little baby raccoon just sitting there staring at me. It was one of the cutest things I've ever seen. It was intense. Good girl, Betty. Good girl. Yeah, because when they were young puppies, given their small dogs, at first, you know, we trained them to use pads. And I was like, oh, that's annoying. So I'm just going to train you to go outside. It takes a while. But they're getting better. They let you know. Do I have indigenous trees that fruit? Like you mean in Canada in general? I would assume so. Do I have a fruit tree on my property? No. Should get some though. Stanton Dinger, what do you mean? Find this part of the video in any other YouTube video. What does that mean? Do you mean just in general? Because we do talk about it. It does come up. But you know, some people have tuned in for a while. Moggy. Go Moggy. Come on. Come on, buddy. Keep going. Good girl, Betty. Oh, there you go. Good girl. Good job, Betty. Good job. Sorry, everybody. She's taking a shit. Good girl, Betty. Yes. Yes. She knows she did a good job. Good girl, Betty. Who's a good girl? Betty. Say hi. Say hi, Betty. That's a good girl. Okay, puppies. Let's go. Come on. Puppies. They don't listen very well sometimes. Come on, puppies. Betty. I'm just going to capture Betty. Mogwai will follow. If you can capture Betty, Mogwai will usually follow suit. Mogwai, inside. Let's go. Inside. She's the sassy one. Good boy. Let's go. Good boy there, Mogwai. Good boy, bud. Let's go inside. Good boy. That's right. Good boy, buddy. Inside, motherfuckers. Let's go. Inside the house. Good puppies. Betty, inside. Good Betty. Sorry about that, everyone. Thank you for putting me putting up with me. Having to take the dogs out. They're very good. They didn't have any accidents from what I could tell since we've been doing the show, so I'm proud of you. Whew. Bloody hot outside. Whew. Uncle Potswatch does not like the heat. I grew up in minus 30 to minus 40. I didn't mind that. I can wear shorts in minus 25 as long as it's not too windy. But this temperature outside is a bit much. Woo! But anyway. <laughs> ah, Michael C.T. Groves, we did talk about it a little bit. Didn't have a huge uh, 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 success with that. The pollen we were using didn't seem to be great. However, I did get a couple of those beans to go that were kind of fairly big. Um, but they came out quite premature. So I'm actually trying to get some of these to pop right now. 
I've had them soaking for 24 hours, but they're not very dark. After 24 hours, what I'll do is when they're, if they're still floating, that's fine. I'm just going to tap them until they sink. Sometimes it's hard for them, especially if they're not fully developed seeds, but they're hard though to get that little opening on the seed uh, to open up to and allow enough water to go inside the genetic material inside the seed to get it to go. But uh, we don't have to do that in the video, we can do that later. These were the only, some of the only beans that we got from our experiment where we were trying to make a new uh, strain. That one we were going to call violated kush, violated death kush. So we'll see if it goes. If it does, great. If it doesn't, well, shit happens. We try. We'll do some more breeding for you later, though. Ah, makes sense, Paul. Then. Oh, me urinating. <laughs> Funnily enough, it, it hasn't happened in every live stream. Just almost every live stream. There have been a few shows where I didn't actually pee and then I'd end the show and I'd be like, huh, I didn't pee in that show. I feel strange. <laughs> yeah, VDK, Violated Death Kush. So we're trying to get these to go. And if we can get any of these beans, hopefully we can get one good male and female. And if we can successfully get, we'll make We'll make them fuck, and then we'll hopefully have enough beans to actually maybe start stabilizing it and do some work with that to show all of you. My general approach for soaking seeds is always 48 hours in the shot glass at room temperature in a uh, <clears throat> dark cupboard. Uh, if they're still floating at 24 roughly hours, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna keep tapping them until it opens it up. And I'm not hitting them hard. I'm not like being rough. I'm just going tap a tap a tap and then they go down. Uh, Jose Canella says, um, "I love you too, Michael." Uh, and then Jose says, uh, "When can I start defoliation?" Well, typically I'll even do defoliation sometimes even quite early on, especially if I'm going with a very hands-on kind of a training motif on the plant in and of itself. So, um, selective defoliation can be done fairly early on. Um, and selective defoliation definitely is a quintessential component at transition into the first few weeks for indoor growing, at least especially. Um, you know, typically we will do in the last week that big pluck. I haven't done the big pluck on these plants. Will I? Nah, eh, probably actually. I think I might do a fairly big pluck on these. Maybe I'll do a video where we can play with some hyperlapses. I like the hyperlapse things where we do them. So maybe we'll do that with doing kind of the heavy pluck on the plants again. We did that in the last run a bit and showed you. So, you know, could be fun. Seeds can drown. No. Well, like, yes, eventually, but that's not going to drown them. Ganjanana, um... You know, if you leave them forever, or like, well, not forever, but like, yeah. So in theory, they can, but got to remember, though, that is something I've run into a lot of people in the UK and Ireland. There seems to be this conceptual idea where, like, you soak your seeds in standing water for, like, a couple of days. Oh, my God, you're going to drown the seed. No, you're not. Fuck off. Eventually, yes, you can drown a seed, but not doing this. This will be fine. This is literally how I've been popping seeds since I was a kid. It's a simple Motif. What am I going to do after this? Well, tomorrow, when it hits 48 hours, I'm going to put them on two layers of paper towel on the bottom, one layer on top. Then I'm going to put them on a plate. I'm going to put a plastic bag over that. I'm going to cut a breathable vent and put another plate on it. I'm going to put it back in the same goddamn cupboard. Simple fucking way to do it. I've been doing it that way the entire goddamn time. It works. <laughs> I don't need to fuck around with other ways on that one. It's only germinating seeds, you know. I fuck around with other techniques, maybe, but germinating seeds, fuck it. Figure it out, make it work, and then go from there, you know what I'm saying? Well, exactly. But Jason Hooligan, we're also talking about kind of, you know, one, there's limited oxygen in a small amount of water like that. So I, I understand a premise in one sense, right? But um, at the end of the day, um, Seedlings can live suspended even in water for quite some time without oxygen, right? So eventually there's going to be gunk growing in there and it is going to choke out some of those fucking parts of the fucking new bile little rootlet. But that doesn't set in right away. It takes quite some time, a number of days. So, I mean, you know, if you're doing, I, I typically do the 48. I don't like going past 48 personally. 
Uh, but 72, totally feasible. I'm sure that's fine. I mean, if it's been working for you, it's obviously been working for you. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but that's always, because basically when you can get that to happen, that means we've uh, integrated sufficient moisture into the genetic material to trigger that replication, that life, those cells to start dividing inside of there and developing that little rootlet that's going to shoot out there. And when it gets to like a centimeter to a centimeter and a half, we're going to plant it and it's going to grow up and it could turn into a giant fucking thing. We don't know. Um, one of the things that is uh, fun, totally off topic, but it was because today when I was putting those violated death kush seeds uh, to see if we can get them to, or not today, yesterday, to get them to pop, um, I, I was toying with a couple of other things that I have in my collection that might be fun to play with. So I might bring the Sasquatch strain back. And, uh, well, we've only got a few beans of that left. So if I get one female out, like I might even do it one seed at a time. And if it goes female, and if it's a good pheno, we might just force Hermie a bunch of that shit. And just make some Mark I Sasquatch stuff. Because I already stabilized it for two years. So we could make a femme version of that to release for everybody. Um, the work on that one's done enough. I, I'm ready to work on something else. So... But a couple of fun things. There's one that's kind of a saddy thing that I have. I have a bunch of them. It's called uh, Green Goblin. It's a saddy motherfucker. It's not a full set, but most things aren't. But uh, it's way sat for my liking. But maybe we'll rock that, you know, show all of you. How was the French toast? Oh, it's fucking tasty. I mean, it's, it's, it's always good. Trust me, that French toast recipe, whether you're putting in uh, uh, wheat or not, is always tasty. Uh, the thing to watch is, is maybe don't ride it quite as high. I went a little crispy on it. Um, I normally like to have a nice golden brown caramelization on the outside of mine. I was fucking with my levels turning it up because I was kind of like live shooting it, even though we were shooting a video, but like I didn't want to chop it up or edit it down too much. Um, so I turned it up a bit. So it was a little bit darker maybe than I wanted it to be, uh, realistically. But, you know, like I said in the video, I even referenced that um, and said I would normally cook it out at like a four and a half, just sort of checking my sides and stuff. But it's always really tasty. Oh yeah, seed to soul. My germination technique is simple, but it works. And if you do it this way, it will always work. Um, unless the seeds are fucked, right? But I mean, in terms of the actual handling and propagating seeds, I've been, you know, I figured this one out as a young teenager, uh, and then just kind of how I was happy doing it. It really worked for me doing it kind of this way, and, and I've, I've never stopped doing it that way because I don't need to. Um, you know, certain shoes fit, go for a goddamn run. Thank you, Ganjanati, oh mama. <sighs> well, my friends, one second here. I'm going to take a sip of beer. I think it's that time of week, or that time of the day, that time of the show. Everybody, thank you for tuning in for another beautiful wonderful Sunday live stream fun day show. I want you all to know, both new and old, I love all of you. We are growing at a rate we never have now. We go up typically on an average day anywhere from 10 to 30, 35 subs, which is kind of intense. Um, you know, and I just want to say a big shout out to everybody, both new and old, and thank you so much for being part of this community. Just know that we're just beginning to kind of try to get better at the content, at least more diversified types of programming for you. And we're not going to slow it down. We're going to keep doing that. Uh, we're going to get the online garden supply store going for you as soon as possible. We're going to get those Squatch uh, rack systems out as soon as possible for you too, everybody. Uh, just know that uh, no rest for the wicked and no uh, rest for the stone. And Uncle Pot Squatch is going to keep grinding it seven days a week. Um, on all the things we're trying to get going for you there. Let's recap on our weekly programming schedule right now. Well, of course, you're always going to have all... Uh, oh, I, I hit 20,000 subs yesterday, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I noticed that yesterday. I think it was yesterday I noticed. Was yesterday when I shot part two, or was it... No, I think it was the day before yesterday, because that's when we shot, 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 shot part one. I think the day we shot part one of the cooking show, we hit 20,000 subs, if I'm remembering that correctly. Uh, so that was a big thing for us. Uh, very exciting to hit that milestone, you know. Um, you know, onwards and upwards, everybody. And, um, you know, what was I going to say? Fuck.
Oh, well, thank you very much, Rexo Grow. I really appreciate that. Uh, oh, right. We were going to go over the weekly programming here now for everybody. So now we've got two formal live stream shows a week we're doing. So, everybody, 2 p.m. British Columbia time on Wednesdays. Uncle Pond Squatch is going to get his ass online for you. Uh, and then, obviously, we have the Sunday Night Live that we always do now at 3 p.m. It's a little bit early. We often originally did it late at night because I was working as a bartender. Now I'm just running Pond Squatch Growers Company and just doing that, okay? Uh, so... Um, we're going to do that one. We started doing it at four, but then we wanted to make it a little bit more conducive to the people of Europe, so we went with three. Uh, we couldn't go any earlier on three for the Sunday show, just for certain demographics and time zones. So that's why on Wednesday we went an extra hour earlier, just to make it a little bit easier for those uh, abroad there. And, and, you know, hey, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, if it doesn't work for you, uh, I apologize. But at least, you know, we leave all of the live streams up. You can watch it the next morning, right? Uh, so, and then on Fridays is when you're going to get that new cooking show, or at least have it shot. It might not release till Saturday some days, but the new cooking show uh, weekly will be either definitely shown on Friday, but if not released on the Friday, at the latest will be released on the Saturday. Uh, so Friday, Saturday is when you're going to get that cooking show. Uh, obviously, you're going to get all the weekly updates. So at full plan for the space currently right now, we will have eventually again... Uh, not for a while, but we'll get all three zones operating on different operating segments of flower and periods in flower, playing with different genetics at all times. So you'll get three updates a week for each three of those zones. Plus, we're going to endeavor to at least make two extra how-to videos a month for you now, too. Uh, so anyway, everybody, thank you. Uncle Pot Squatch fucking loves you. Check out potsquatchbros.com for all your swag needs. That's a great way to support the channel. For now, uh, we're going to do the online garden supply store. Like we said, we're working on that. We uh, actually successfully, finally, took us almost two years of fighting shit, have corporate accounts as a company now with a large banking institution in Canada. Um, so that was great. That was a big step forward for us. And, uh, you know, I've uh, got a bunch of paperwork and other things that I'm working on to kind of hopefully we'll become a retailer at Green Planet Newts very soon on our store and doing a bunch of other wonderful fun things for you. But anyway, everybody, I'm going to fucking fuck off. Let's be honest. I got some shit to do. I got a lot of chores left to do in the fucking grow today and i'm gonna probably try to do a quick and tiny 10 second tiny before the white gets home you know what i'm saying uh so anyway uncle pot scratch loves you i'll see you next time uh the next update obviously on the the pink kush there that's gonna come out on thursday for you and we'll go from there okay love you motherfuckers and anytime you want to send me an email maybe you know like if you got an idea you want to see like a, a certain type of food on the cooking show we can do that even if it's not a weed rep rep recipe, I was a head chef, okay? So pretty much anything you want me to cook, I can figure out how to put weed in it, okay? Leave that part up to me, and we'll figure it out. Anyway, Uncle Pot Squatch loves you. Talk to you next time, motherfuckers! Peace.